just jumped into this DraftKings $10 best ball draft. We drew the four pick. We're going to see how it goes. I've got everything loaded up. My draft list loaded from EstablishTheRun.com. If you guys wanted to take a part in that, go to smizzle.tv slash ETR and check out the fine products that they have over there. As for me, we're going to see where we can get with this top four pick. Let's go. He's a legend. I didn't notice during the intro, but Pace146, viewer, member of the Smiz gang is in here drafting against me on stream. So good luck to you, Pace. Uh, if you snipe me, I'm going to ban you. Probably. You're, you're, I'm going to ban you. Yeah, I need a... Dealer, can I get a reshuffle, please? That would be great. Playmaker, thank you for the 12 months, says Cooper Cup. He wants me to draft Cooper Cup in this. I don't think I've drafted Cooper Cup. He's a good draft pick. I like Cooper Cup. I don't think I've drafted him, though. When does this start? DraftKings. When does that first pick go? waiting um okay <laughs> justin jefferson goes one let's see who pace takes it to jamar chase is pace on the chase chase i think he should be personally he is number three where do the qbs go Okay, I'm going to do a thing. Christian McCaffrey goes there. Tyreek Hill is great. Cooper Cup, yeah, a lot of people are taking him there. Give me Travis Kelsey in this spot. Travis Kelsey gives me two outs in the second round. Okay? Travis Kelsey gives me two outs in the second round because, yes, it is a large field. This is a large field best ball tournament. You draft best ball differently than you draft your season-long leagues. You draft tournament best ball differently than you draft... Your, your sit and go leagues, so to speak, you know, your one off leagues. So you have to think about the format that you're playing when you're drafting these teams the way that you want to draft them. So Kelsey in the first round, and I draft him in the middle a lot, anywhere between four and seven. I have to know that I can get some sort of correlation coming back. Now, whether I get Patrick Mahomes in the second round, uh, or if Mahomes goes to somebody else in this range, I believe I can get T. Higgins right here and have myself uh, a little bit of a weak 17 stack, which if my team is lucky enough to get to that point, gives me some correlation with what could be or should be one of, if not the highest total game on that slate. When am I going over Rainmaker? We already did that. That'll be up on the Fantasy Football Channel soon. DraftKings just made some announcements about the Rainmaker program for 2023 and the field passes, which are going to drop shortly. Uh, so we're going to go over that. We are already have gone over that. Go check out that video over on Al Smizzle Fantasy Football. Uh, it'll be up later today. It is the 21st of July as I'm recording this video. Eckler goes in here at eight. Everything is pretty much standard. CD Lamb going a little bit ahead of ADP. A, uh, AJ Brown here to MVS. Uh, I'm going to assume he's going to take Jalen Hurts here <clears throat> at 2-3, but we'll see. Strength, strange things can definitely happen in DraftKings $10 drafts. Amon Ross St. Brown and CD Lamb both going at 8 and 11 here. Easily my favorite 12-13 turn uh, is to get CD Lamb and AJ uh, and Amon Ross St. Brown because of the uh the correlation that they bring for week 17 and their standalones uh, talents, especially for DraftKings scoring. Pace, welcome to the chat, Pace, with the resubscription for 45 months, randomly drafting with my fantasy Yoda, he says. All right. Garrett Wilson, uh, I kind of would have liked to, like, if I draft Amon Ross St. Brown in the first, I want to get a cowboy in the second, whether it's Lamb or Pollard. Uh, he's fine as a standalone. Garrett Wilson, uh, also awesome. Interested to see if he takes Hurts here. I fully expect him to.
Makes sense. Pretty standard play, right? Pretty standard play right there. Eckler following that up with. Interested to see where, where Ranker goes. I'm always curious about how players are going to draft and or overdraft running backs on DraftKings. Because of DraftKings scoring, you typically don't want to take more than two running back. He took Mahomes here, and now he's on auto draft. Awesome. <laughs> yep, Mahomes incoming because of the auto draft. He timed out. Obviously, like I said, odd things happen on DraftKings. It's just the way that it goes. The $10 drafts are full on uh, the wild, wild west. Waddle Hill, interesting. So I'm going to say that this guy is a knower. Diggs stacked with Allen. This makes sense. This makes sense. This is a timeout. But like I said, I like to leave myself outs. So we'll see if the outs uh, actually occur here. We'll see if it gets to me. Country Storm is up. He takes Tony Pollard. That leaves me T. Higgins. So that was the out that I was talking about. Uh, that if somebody was to snipe Patrick Mahomes ahead of me, then that allows me to correlate Kelsey, who is fine as a standalone play, with T. Higgins. Big D says that he would like to, uh, he likes getting T Higgins in a Cincinnati KC week 17 stack uh, or a Minnesota Cincinnati. Uh, I have a lot of Minnesota Cincinnati stuff too uh, that allows me to bring that back with because Minnesota players, uh, aside from Justin Jefferson, are really solid values to be quite honest. The quarterbacks also in these, Joe Burrow going right there to pace. Not leaving anything to chance. Taking him in the third round. Devontae Smith going there. I'm going to take Ramondre. Now, as I was saying, I do not recommend taking more than two running backs in the first nine or ten rounds on DraftKings because of the scoring. There's been a lot of work done on this in terms of uh, the research of it, where if you get a, like an underdog, 0.5 PPR, you can go any route you want. You could take three running backs, two running backs, one running back, five running backs in the first 10 rounds and still have a similar uh, point output expectation. But on DraftKings, with their scoring, uh, with bonuses and full PPR... You really shouldn't go for more than two running backs. You do have to load up on wide receivers. You should take a premium tight end somewhere in that range. It's just so valuable because of the full PPR and how many points those heavily targeted players bring to the table that you can make it up later with running backs who are, as we've referred to them in the past, 40 percenters. Guys who get 40% of the snaps, 40% of the touches, uh, and they generally will fall after pick 100. A lot of them in range uh, 115 to 130, where they're going to have... Oh, that has to hurt. Ollie ran. You know he took Andrews here hoping to get Lamar on the way back and get that stack to go with ARSB and Garrett Wilson. And now Lamar and Amari. Like I said, things get wild on DraftKings, and they get wild quick. In these ten dollar drafts, you don't think a premium tight end is necessary, considering you can get four decent late rounds. You can; it's a route to go, you know. But a lot of things have to pan out. Of the elite tight ends, when they hit, they hit really, really hard. There goes Hawkinson, who I believe is an elite tight end this year. I was kind of hoping. Uh, that we get somebody to fall in here. I never try to say who I think I would like to have fall uh, to me at this spot because of the fact that we do stream these drafts live. Uh, Justin Fields going here at 4-5. Williams following Allen at 4-2. Let's see who's left on the board. So I'm not going to be drafting 
uh, another running back for a bit. I mean, or if I do draft a running back, I'm really not drafting another one for a bit. Joe Mixon goes in there. Country Storm once again. And then we have the end of this uh, round four and then coming up to the, the front of round five. You don't think a premium... Oh, I already read that. Is Jacobs holdout scaring you or just like Ramondre better? Uh, I like Ramondre. I don't dislike Jacobs. I do think that uh, we could see some Le'Veon Bell type stuff. Travis Etienne leaving me Christian Kirk. Everybody's high on Jacksonville. I'm no different. I think that they're good. I'm not going off the reservation saying that I think that they're going to go to the Super Bowl or anything like that. But I do think that they're solid. I always like to bet on emerging offenses that don't have, right, like young quarterbacks coming into their own with a lot of targets with no turnover in the offensive coaching staff. Like the, you know, the same head coach, offense coordinators, quarterback coaches. That continuity for a young quarterback is extremely uh, valuable. And then they add a player who's a wild card for sure. You know, in, in Calvin Ridley, who hasn't played in a year and a half. But like, it is, there is a lot of value there. There's meat on the bone. Top players available right now. Uh, Harris, Terry McLaurin, London, Madison, Herbert, Moore, Brown, Johnson, Dobbins. Herbert goes there. I'm going to take Madison, and that's going to do it for me at running back for a little bit. We'll go back to the draft board. We'll bring this down here so you guys can see. So I have two heavily involved running backs at this point to, to kind of hang my, my hat on. I have Christian Kirk, who I believe is going to get a solid target market share. T Higgins, Travis Kelsey, week 17, uh, you know, superstars. T Higgins, maybe not a superstar because chases. I think Higgins is a superstar. I think that his stats get muted a little bit by the fact that Jamar Chase is there, but both can thrive, uh, with as good as Joe Burrow is. Not really high on Harris. I know. I'm not. Feels like the Pats will add another veteran running back. They might. Right? Like, there's stuff out there that could change everything. If Saquon Barkley and or Josh Jacobs holds out for the first 10 weeks of the year, that changes everything. If Dalvin Cook signs with New England, that changes everything. If... Ezekiel Elliott or Dalvin Cook signs with, uh, or Leonard Fournette signs with the Dallas Cowboys. That changes a lot of things, or, or at least the outlook for somebody like Tony Pollard. So there's a lot of shoes that are levitating right now that have yet to drop that are going to make ADPs fluctuate. But we saw Ramondre Stevenson last year with Damian Harris, a very capable running back in his own right, uh, and I don't think that his role is going to be changed by the addition of another running back based on that coaching staff and the way that they deploy their backs over the years. Ramondre's role at worst, if they were to add another back, would be the guy who gets 12 or 13 touches and five or six targets a game, which is more than enough in DraftKings scoring to do the work. Now, if they don't pick up another back, he might get 18 carries a week and six carries. Uh, targets on top of all the goal line work and he becomes an absolute smash who could end the year as a top three or four running back. Would I stack division teams? You have a lot of bring back games. Uh, in weekly winners drafts on underdog, most definitely. In tournament best ball, not as much. Tournament best ball, I want to go after a little bit more, you know, he nabbed Goddard to go along with Hertz and Brown here. Like this team so far. He's a knower. This dude's a knower. This, uh, where was he? This dude's a little bit of a knower. Three running backs here. Two running backs, one and two. 
pick Herbert with neither, with none of his top three targets. This guy is not a knower. Let's say he's not a knower. He does not know things. Coming up on pick 69. Nice. Kadarius Tony, that's way too high for Kadarius Tony. Now, because I think other guys are going to be there, and he's still a value at this pick based on his ADP, I'm going to take Trevor Lawrence to build this stack along with Christian Kirk. Lock it. Back to our boy Pace. You can't see because it's behind my head. He took Addison ahead of ADP, but I like Addison a lot. Just because he's going to be on the field a ton. Now, there's a possibility that they don't go with the rookie, uh, at least not for the first week or two, and that they go with uh, KJ Osborne, who's very underdrafted. Big ADP gap between, uh, between those two. Do I have anybody in this range that I love? I don't. I don't love any of these guys, but I will take Gabe Davis there. Just because of the upside and being in that offense. He disappointed everybody last year, but he was being drafted um, up in here, third, fourth round. Now we're getting him in the seventh round with no different expectations this year than what we saw last year. Reaches for Tua, but he's a knower. He knows that he has to build that stack. The auto-drafted team, Eckler, Mahomes, Jacobs, Hawkinson, God, uh, Godwin, Evans, whatever. White being drafted here ahead of ADP with pick 70. I think his ADP was 78. But if you want your player and you know that you're not going to get him on the way back, it's fine to go, go nail your guy. But, you know, at Pollard, ETN, White, again, I like to keep it to... Two running backs in the first 10 rounds on DraftKings, please. You draft whoever it is that you want. So Pace said in chat, you just had to take Higgins out. So I didn't. Higgins was my safe. He was my out. I wanted to get Mahomes. But Higgins leaves me out. So when I draft Kelsey in the first round, because if I can't get the correlation with Mahomes there, I can get a little week 17 correlation. A good standalone in Higgins, a good standalone in Kelsey, but add some week 17 correlation for me there. Why are people avoiding Miles Sanders when Carolina says they want him to be a three down back? Because I, I'm not buying Carolina's offense. But, like, if you, if you want to take him, take him. I just, I'm not sold that that offense is going to produce a lot of touchdowns. So I would rather take players that I think could produce more touchdowns. Somebody like Cook, somebody like White, you know. How does it make you feel having your brand as somebody's DK picture? I think it's kind of cool. Love David Montgomery. The ADB gap is not as wide as it was last year. So this year, where'd he go? Not Swift. Where is he? He went for sure. Oh, he's up here. Uh, Gibbs at 310 and Montgomery at 8-1. Last year, it was around here at like the 1-2 turn. DeAndre Swift was going up here, and at pick like 160, we were getting Jamal Williams. He was like my most drafted player at like 60% on underdog last year uh, at like pick 160 as a 40, projected a 40% guy that we were speaking about earlier. So like... It's not the same, right? I do like the potential value of Dave Montgomery in that offense, where he is. If he takes over the Jamal Williams role, then it's going to be extremely valuable on that offense, the way that it's uh, projected to play. Isaiah Pacheco, little injury concerns there with him, but auto drafter. I don't like having an auto drafter, especially in a one where I was, you know, a video where I was going to do not what I wanted. I do like Kyle Pitts in the sixth. I know people aren't ready to be hurt again. I'm not sure that I love his quarterback situation. We've been down that road before, 
right? The year before, we've been that... Evan Ingram. Damn it. That's why I wanted in this pick. Kind of wanted to get Ingram there. Didn't get Ingram there. I'm going to reach a little bit on ADP. Take Bateman here. Of the Rashad variety. My receivers right now, Higgins, Kirk, Davis, Bateman. I think Bateman meant a lot to that offense. And when he got hurt, that offense operated way differently. They didn't have a lot of wide receiver talent on the outside last year. This year, they drafted Zay uh, Flowers, and they picked up uh, Odell, and then they've got Bateman coming back. I think that that offense, Baltimore, is extremely sneaky, uh, and I have been trying to build those stacks because if you can get Andrews and Lamar at that 3-4 turn, you kind of feel like you should. with massive upside, former MVP winner, former highest fantasy scorer, all of those things. There's a lot of flexibility there for you when you draft him. Pitts is unlikely to be healthy the first half of the year. I hadn't heard that. Daniel Jones, I'm going to take him as my QB two. Love the value of Daniel Jones, and I love the stack that it brings because a lot of his targets are going at pick 150 and later. So it allows me to get a high upside rushing quarterback, single week upside rushing quarterback, uh, with targets aside from Darren Waller, uh, who's being drafted around this range, right? Like he's uh, he's been drafted, but like you see where he is on the list, right? So if you plug him in at around pick 75, very easy to get Jones at 100 and then pick one or two more of his targets later in the draft. I hate having to do this there. That's better. Chat, how do you guys feel about DeAndre Swift? Because the more time that goes on, the more information we get. Kind of like being at a poker table. When the closer to the button you are, the more information you get. So like, Last year, this time, hard knocks time. We were all, everybody all off season was buying DeAndre Swift because Lions were everybody's favorite team coming into last year uh, from a ascent, uh, ascending standpoint. And it was very easy to buy them as an offense. And then hard knocks made them really likable as an offense. And as much as that running backs room was building up DeAndre Swift, you could lead the league in rushing. Remember that episode? You could lead the league in rushing. You're the most talented back in this league. All this sort of stuff. And we were all like, ah, we love Andre Swift. Ah, I gotta draft him more. We had to go get DeAndre Swift. That didn't pan out. With the benefit of hindsight, we realized that they didn't really like DeAndre Swift all that much. And so now all that locker room talk and everything that came out on that show seems to be you can look at it now through the lens of were they just trying to build up the confidence of a player that they felt was a no confidence player at that point in time? Like he just didn't believe in himself. I hate to use the word and I'm not going to, I'm not saying this in terms of, I don't like it when people say that NFL players are soft because like they're, they're not like the, if anybody's soft they're it's not NFL players, but like, in hindsight, in retrospect, it does look like that coaching staff was trying to build up a player who doesn't believe in himself. Which is a little bit scary. Because now we're all buying in. Well, he's on the Eagles. He can't fail. He can't do it. But like, uh... We watched him fail on a really good offense last year. Now, granted, his price this year is cheaper than it was last year, right? He was like one, two turn sort of player last year. And it's like, okay, we've learned he's a little cheaper this year. 
A lot of running backs going in here. Room getting smart. Richardson's going to be an instant. Now we have two players on auto pick. Coming up on my pick, so I'll get off of that. Charbonnet. I'm going to take Zay Jones in this spot. Trevor loves him. Who am I to, you know, to say that he can't love a man? Zay Jones, his safety blanket. Christian Kirk, leading target getter last year. I was not able to get uh, the double tight end where I picked Bateman here. I was going to take uh, Engram here. I might not have taken Zay Jones had I gotten Engram here. Uh, but I do have my Lawrence stack pretty happy with that. Pace should be taking Tyler Board here, I'd assume, but maybe he's not. It's very possible that he's not. Oh, he is. He just put in chat. Al, don't do it. No, I was not going to take Tyler Boyd there. I can understand how you were nervous, though. If he's available, there's definitely a player that I want in this spot. I haven't noticed him go. Speaking of Jamal Williams... Oh, he did go. You did take him. You did take Jarek McKinnon. That's who I wanted. Love Jarek McKinnon where he's being drafted. I'm drafting. Oh, and then Sky Moore went. God damn it. Uh, I'm drafting Jarek McKinnon in this range right here, right? Like the 120s, 115 to 130. I can't get enough Jarek McKinnon. 115 to 130. Can't get enough shares. And that's before the Pacheco might be on PUP, but like that PUP is week to week. They take them off anytime they want. You know, uh, I want as much Jarek McKinnon as I can get. You give me a pass catching back in that offense. Kelsey and McKinnon are old. Great. Kelsey's been old for three years. Remember three years ago? I don't know. Kelsey's like 30 years old. He can't do this anymore. There's going to be a year when he can't do it anymore. I fully, fully acknowledge that. But McKinnon's, not, McKinnon's age is not going to affect... what he brings to the table and what he does. You're not drafting McKinnon at 120 or 115 because you expect him to get 300 or 350 touches. You're drafting him there because you're expecting him to get high value, high leverage touches at about 150 to 200 on the year in an explosive offense, especially in best ball, where he's going to have, if he has the same role that he had from you know the second half of last year, where he's not the lead guy. Pacheco's going to, you know, be the guy who hammers inside the tackles and they're going to use McKinnon situationally when they get into the red zone, 2 minute drill, uh third down and long situations, down and distance situations. Just a just a smash for me at 120. No worries for weeks 15, 16, and 17. With what? This is Kelsey's last year's elite. Okay, I'm glad I have him this year then. <laughs> no. Again, I can't worry about <clears throat> injury down the road. I can't worry about things that are out of my control. You know? I can't. There's just nothing that I can do about those things. So instead of pushing at them, you know, and trying to force control over things that are 100% out of my control, I choose to just do the things that are in my control. Tank Bigsby, he's been climbing a lot recently. Going to nab Okonkwo here. Now, I'm a little thin at running back. Right? I'm a little thin at running back by design on DraftKings. 
right? I never draft more than two running backs in the first 10 rounds. I, I just refuse. I do kind of feel, now this is narrative driven, so take this for whatever it is. Who's the best deep threat on Tennessee? Think about it. Think about their depth chart. Nuke's not a deep threat. Burks is definitely not a deep threat. Okonkwo had one of the highest downfield target rates at the tight end position last year. High average yards per catch. Derrick Henry, if they start throwing to him, they ain't throwing it to him deep. He'll run with it after he gets it in his hands. There's your week uh, 17 correlation with your Cincinnati stack. And then Irv Smith, I like that. Easy to nab him around 150 this year. Goes great as a, a you know a, a secondary tight end go along with a, a Burrow stack. I love that pick. I just got that in a different draft. And I think I also nailed that in the Scott Fishbowl draft. Scott Fishbowl is like the only, is the only transactional league that I do. See, and I don't like any of these running backs, so I'm just going to keep picking other positions. Of these, I think Mingo has the highest upside. I know I said that I'm not really high on that Carolina offense, but around ADP with rookie wide receivers, uh, I'm not buying DJ Chark Jr. Uh, Chark is, is essentially a deep threat, can't handle the short to intermediate stuff, right? He's not that type of wide receiver. Um, so he can't handle a high target market share. Just not who he is, right? And he can't get separation deep. So like, what, what can he do? Like they have to get stuff to work for him. And yes, as someone in chat just said, I have Jacksonville, so I have to get something, or I should get something on Carolina. I believe that the highest upside play on Carolina right now is Mingo. Not sure why Chark has him rated so high. I don't question it. You know, like, I may not like the pick. Like, it's just somebody that, that I don't want on my teams. But, like, maybe he does a thing. There's name recognition. Maybe they like him. I don't know. I just don't feel like he gets, uh, gets open. Goff to Laporta uh, to go along with I believe that he drafted St. Brown early. Does he have any Dallas Cowboy bringbacks? Gallup here. Okay, so we got a little bit of a little sprinkle of some week 17 in there. Terrace Marshall breakout season is, is loading, maybe. What do you guys think about Rashi Rice? I still don't think that Kansas City has anything at wide receiver. I think they have enough guys. I think they got a bunch of dudes, right? MVS, not special. Sky Moore didn't look special last year. Rasheed Rice, we'll see. He's a rookie. We don't know. Um, you know, uh, Watson, whatever. Like, they're just a bunch of guys who are able to run routes, and Mahomes will pick out the one that's open. He's got Jerry Rice DNA. Good enough for me. I was going to take Miller in this spot. The running backs are just drying up. Luckily, I've got two guys that I think on DraftKings are solid anchors. There goes DJ Chark. Do, 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 do. I'll take Hodgins. I don't know why. I just like Hodgins. He may suck. Sky has good upside. And look, any wide receiver. So does Rushy Rice for that. Damn, you know. By that token, so does he. Hodgins showed me enough last season. Showed me enough that, like, I'm willing to buy in as a part of a Daniel Jones stack late in round 14. I 
I'm willing to do that. This is the pick I don't get. Not specifically to this player. Uh, more versus other players. And I get it because, you know, he's got... Oh, he didn't get him. He must have sniped him from him. Like, if you're getting him as a part of a, of a stack there, fine. I'll take Paris Campbell ahead of ADP. Whatever. I've got my giant stack in that spot. I prefer that to, to Hyatt, and I'm willing to be wrong. I think that that's as much a part of it as anything else when it comes to drafting, specifically for drafting uh, best ball and tournaments. You have to be willing to be wrong. If you're never willing to be wrong, you're never going to make good plays. You're never going to build lineups that have the possibility uh, of taking something big down because you're too afraid to escape uh, ADP. Giants just signed Cole Beasley. Great. Didn't we just... Everybody was worried about old. <laughs> Cole Beasley, like, 56. Paris Campbell has been basically their slot guy. Very... Paris Campbell has entered the professional wide receiver portion of his career, right? Where Corey Davis, he's he's gotten into that zone too, where like he's reliable. Kadri Ismail was there. For those of you who were, you know, my age and played fantasy football 20, 30 years ago, I had classes with Kadri Ismail when I was at Syracuse. Like the missile. He came out of college super fast, dude. You know, his brother was a Heisman Trophy guy, all this sort of thing. And then he got to the NFL and he wasn't going to be that superstar dude that he was at Syracuse. But he found a way to be a professional. I go to practice. I keep my body in shape. I take care of myself. I eat right. I run routes. I'm where I'm supposed to be. And I'm there on time. And I'm trustworthy for a quarterback. For super flex startup dynasty, do you like Richardson or Watson? I mean, you want the young guy, Richardson. It's for dynasty, right? For dynasty, you want the rookie quarterback that could be Cam Newton. Has Paris Campbell ever had a successful year, though? Yeah, last year. Go look at his box scores from last year. Just on a trash team. He's at that point where he's just a, he's a professional wide receiver now. He goes in, keeps himself in shape, knows the playbook, always runs the routes he's supposed to run, runs them well. Serious question, what's a Mingo? A rookie wide receiver for Carolina. So this is the thing that I was talking about. Meyer, Laporta, uh, the kid on Green Bay who's going at like 210 ADP. Why is Kincaid up here in the 11th round when all these guys actually project to, to have as much work as him from a target standpoint? It just doesn't make sense to me that he is being drafted as that guy when it does not appear that he is that guy. Desmond Ritter is a... Riddle wrapped in mystery. What is it? He's an enigma shrouded in mystery. Damn it. I can't get the three words right. But uh, Anquan Bolden's a good comp. Anquan Bolden was, this is the kid, Luke Musgrave. That's the other rookie tight end that I think is really solid. Go with Chuba Hubbard in this spot. Chumba Wumba, if you will. Leonard Fournette. A lot of free agent running backs out there that are going to mess up some backfield. Is this my high dollar best ball draft? No, this is $10. The high dollar ones don't start like immediately. I can't like be on stream and be like, all right, I'm going to do a draft. Here's a 555. Like it takes like hours for those to fill. So I did a $10 because like I knew it would fill in like three minutes. And the $10 can get wild. They can get really wild. You have a blind spot with drafting. You don't know any rookies until like week three. Otherwise, 
rookie wide receivers are typically a, a good bet. Second year wide receivers also a good bet. I know who he's taking here. Yep. As <laughs> soon as he took Mac Jones, I knew that Taekwon was next off the board. I was going to take Taekwon. Now I don't know what I want. I really don't. Taekwon has this mystical upside because he runs like a 4-2-40. But there's a philosophy in life that you should follow the money. And Devontae Parker is where all the money went there. I'm not going to take Jalen Hyatt. I'm not going to triple stack uh, him. I'm not taking Ty Chandler because I have uh, the other cat. Take Bobby Trees. A little bit ahead of ADP, but where's the ball going to go there? Everybody expects Nico Collins to have this big breakout season because of the new situation, which is fine, right? Maybe Michi. Is it Michi or Mechi? I don't know how to pronounce his name yet. Apologies to the Michi Mechi family for me butchering your last name one way or the other. Never my aim. Miko Hardman. The question remains, is Miko Hardman Jr. good at football? Have I tried weekly winners on underdog? I have. I like them. Different draft philosophy. Remember the Texans wide receiver so was a lifeguard? Yeah. He looked like a lifeguard. He looked literally like the lifeguard skin on Fortnite. Tannehill could have been had in the 20th rounds a week ago. Now, not as much. Isaiah likely. Wait a minute. Oh, he didn't. He got sniped. Yeah. So this guy drafted Andrews. He got Lamar. So he's got Lamar. Did he pair him with anybody else? He got Odell. And then he picked likely late in case, I guess, in case of a, in case of an injury too. Where are we sitting and what do I need to, to pick in the, the last few rounds of this draft? We are sitting on nine wide receivers, two tight ends, four running backs, two QBs, two, uh, two, four, nine, two. Got it. The running back run late kind of took some things away from me there. I love McBride, but I'm not going to take McBride where I have Madison. I typically don't uh, handcuff my running backs in, in best ball because... I draft my best ball teams with the philosophy that everything that I want to happen is going to happen, right? Draft your best ball teams as though you're right. Always. Your prediction, Titans start two and seven or three and seven, bench Tannehill, trade away big dog. What is their bye week? Titans? Where'd he go? there seven so like i think that if if they were going to bench him it would be around the bye week i think that's where it would be i need a running back in this spot i'm gonna go with pierre strong jr but no i don't want that thing so let's go with uh carter <sighs> again draft like you're right means i don't like to draft backup uh handcuff type guys to my guys because i have stevenson because i have madison i'm not going to draft mcbride there i'm not going to draft strong in that spot uh so i want the guy that's going to step into a much bigger job meaning that if Brees hall is not ready to come back we're all projecting that he's going to be back and then work into it for the first two three weeks and then get a bigger uh share of the carries moving forward same with javante williams but like sometimes it's hard to come back from injury We'll see how that goes. So if he's not ready, we know that Carter is at least an acceptable guy to have in those situations later in the season. You know, if he's not healthy and can't go, you can get some usable weeks out of him if Brees misses time. CEH, man, whatever happened to him? He fell off. Logan Thomas, stream favorite. I hope that the deuce is loose in that spot. I also don't mind this Rams situation here. Zach Evans, 
my issue with Zach Evans is not Zach Evans related. It's McVay related. And he doesn't typically like to play his rookies. Uh, they do have another running back on that team here in Kyron Williams, who was a rookie last year, who Shefty loved a lot early in the season. Shefty was like, he's going to have some games where he does some things and they really like him. And then later in the year, when there were some injury situations, they kind of played him. I'd prefer to draft Kyron Williams uh, in a late round situation over Zach Evans for that reason. Totally narrative driven, right? Completely narrative driven. Didn't get hurt the opening kickoff. Yeah. He was the one that, that got hurt early in the season. He missed like two months. But Shefty was like, they loved him. But even loving him, he only got like six, seven carries late in the, you know, touches per game late in the year. But if he's to take on a bit of a larger role and be the Henderson to Cam Akers, Cam Akers, and it's not Zach Evans, who many people are projecting to be that guy, but it is Kyron Williams, there's massive upside there. And then you're one play away from being the guy. There goes Trey McBride. Watch Trey McBride run. Everybody looks to pick one thing apart. That's like, we've had this discussion so many times on stream that people love being the red team in 2023 and finding one thing that that unravels the entire sweater, right? Hey, this guy looks really good and he's fast and he's athletic and he runs with power and he catches the ball. Yeah, but he fumbled it a few times. Look at this guy. He's big. He's strong. He's fast. He runs great routes. He's always there on time. Defensive backs are always off balance. when He seems to get a ton of separation. Yeah, but he drops balls. Okay. Think about it in terms of the draft capital you're paying for those players. So if you're getting uh, McBride as a, you know, as a, Madison backup, fine. There goes Downs, Russ Gage, it was Trey McBride. There's two McBrides that go late. Minnesota McBride and Trey McBride. I'm talking about Dwayne McBride. Boston Scott, always good for like two weeks a year where he has like 25 DraftKings points and pisses everybody off who started the uh, the other running back at the time on the uh, Eagles. Always happens. Devin Duvernay. Double dip specialist, Devin DuVernay. Showdown King. See, there's Dwayne McBride. We're not going to take Dwayne McBride. Where did homie go? I need another running back in this spot. I don't think I need another quarterback. I'm going to gamble with my uh, elite tight end that I have and I think a, a really good backup tight end. I'm going to get another uh, running back in this spot with Kyron Williams to try and shoot the moon. Seven running backs, nine wide receivers, two quarterbacks. We have a Trevor Lawrence, double stack, Ramondre, Madison, Higgins, Kirk, Gabe Davis, Kelsey, Bateman, Daniel Jones, double stack. There's Zay Jones, the second part of that. Uh, Damian Harris, Okonkwo, Mingo, Hodgins, Campbell, Hubbard, Woods, Carter, Vaughn, and Kyron Williams. Thank you guys for being here. Look out for another video right there. He's a legend.